Guys, welcome to Fish Hook. I'm Charles. We got a great one planned tonight. This is dinner. I got family coming over later, so I'm going to bring you in and help you help me make this meal. This one, we're going to be featuring pork shoulder steaks. This is a lean cut. You could do pork chops also. I had these in the refrigerator. I just picked them up this week and I wanted to use these. So I've got four of them that we're gonna cook in 100, I think it's 144, I'll check with Jewel. And I've got another bath here going for 185 degrees. And that, we're gonna do apples. We're gonna continue to chop these up and dice them up, put them in here. I've got cranberries, I've got bourbon maple syrup, bourbon, some lemon juice, seasonings and we're going to make a delicious apple chutney and we're going to cook it at 185 degrees and we're going to put them in the sous vide bags we're going to we're not going to double stack them we're going to keep them like one inch high so they evenly cook all right so i'm going to get with chopping right now and this should be a lot of fun i've been looking forward to doing this all week I don't think there's any set um, size. You gotta cut these. They're gonna be great. Whenever we made apples with pork, this was the size they really were. So I'm gonna do it about half that size. But I think the cranberries are gonna add some really good sweetener to this. These are gala apples that I'm using. Uh, the recipe I had called the Brayburn. I don't have Brayburn apples here, but the honey crisp is great. There's so many really nice, juicy apples. But man, gala. I love gala, partial to gala apples. So I'm going to chop this up. Let me get this mixture going and then season up these steaks, get them in here, and get them cooking. So I'll catch back with you in just a short. All right, guys, we are going to prep the steak right now. Both of these shoulders, we'll all four of them. We'll get started. These packages for weight reference, 1.87 pounds, two and a half pounds. So we got roughly a little over four pounds of steaks that we're going to cook and season. Oh yeah. rest of these For something about pork and apple uh, just go great together I had this, this ever since I was a little kid a little kid growing up I've had this so I like this so we'll season each one and then We'll put them in these bags that I have prepped here. These will be for the apples. Okay. Get these all ready. It's a real simple dish to make. It's really the beauty. I know I talk about sous vide. The beauty of sous vide is that it's so simple, it does the work for you. Temperature, 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 temperature is everything. And timing, that's it, but put it in there. It, it just breaks down tough meats effort, effortlessly. I like, it's better than a slow cooker, my opinion. Maybe not everybody agrees with that, but my opinion, uh, I like it better than a, better than a slow cooker. Okie dokie. Uh, we're gonna let that olive oil. We're gonna make a little bit of a mess here. I season this just like I do my steaks. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like that. Get nice. And then I'm gonna put some more oil in, in that as well. All 
a little kosher salt. Usually you really get a good even distribution when you do it this way. Some black pepper. What else we got here? Okay. You'd be surprised how the kosher salt really seasons it up. And it doesn't, unless you go really nuts on with the salt. It just soaks it up, adds flavor, brings out the flavor rather in the meat. Okay. That's a beautiful cut of meat. We're getting these ready. This is what it should look like. Beautiful pork steaks. Oh yeah. Just put them here for a second. This is ready to go. <clears throat> Get the next one. And then I'm gonna vacuum seal them. We just finished uh, filming and having uh, sockeye salmon with a fast sous vide. Holy mackerel. The absolute best salmon I have ever cooked, ever, hands down. There's no doubt about that one. I like to get my hands in everything, but you know what's going to happen. It's a big mess. I'm trying to keep it contained here. Okay. Going to have a beautiful flavor, these things. Oh, yeah. So I got two sous vides going. That one's at 185, and this, I believe, is 140. 40. We'll check it. Right, this one is ready to go. You can really do this not like a mess like I did. If you pay more attention. And at the bottom of the video, if you watch it, if you guys have comments or questions, please feel free to leave them there. I will respond. Oh, this is all going to get to you. See, the beauty too of the vacuum seal, you are ma you're marinating the meat. I know a lot of you, you guys and girls know this. When you vacuum seal, whether you have an external one with the bag is outside or an internal, like a chamber one, I have both. It forces everything concentric all the way tight in, and the meat is the porous, it sucks it in, you're marinating it. And with the external one, you can hit the seal right away because it's made to pull out all the moisture. So as soon as you see if your oil or your ingredients are being sucked out of the liquid, immediately hit the seal button. It'll stop the vacuum right there, and you'll capture it in the bag. Isn't that beautiful? Piece of art. It's gorgeous. I get my kids excited when, when uh, I plan food and I do a meal. They love when I do it because I think I put more heart and soul into this. 
They're gonna hate me when they see the video. They say, Dad, did you say that? Yep, I did. I put a lot of passion in it. First, because I like it. I like to cook. Uh, we'll have, we're gonna do deer meat too from this past year's hunting season. I got a deer. So some of these will be with the deer meat. So we're gonna experiment with the sous vide deer. I have some deer roast. You can do pot roast for some of you guys and girls out there that love pot roast. With the sous vide, if you looked at one of my uh, recent videos on how to make a chuck steak taste just like a ribeye, because I like to blindfold you and I bet you I would trick some of you guys. The, um, I got salt on oh, a little bit more. There we go. I was able, I mean, the sous vide is able to take, to convert that chuck steak. If I cook it at a higher degree and longer, it becomes, I turn it into a pot roast. So you can get two types of cu cuts or finishes or preparations out of the same piece of meat and make it into two entirely different pieces of meat. It's amazing. But with the sous vide, you can do that. And what's beautiful about it is that it's such, honestly, I don't have to think about temperature. Oh my goodness, how long is it in the oven? Oh wow, keep checking the temp. What a pain in the neck that was. When Thanksgiving comes, I don't I don't cook any more whole turkeys. I give it up on that. Because I well, I'm sure that some of you guys are way better cooks than me. I can't get everything cooked evenly. It's impossibility anyway. The meat cooks at 158 degrees with the sous vide, and the white meat was at 140 or 142, something like that. I'm going by memory here. Totally different. You overcook the white meat all the time on these uh doing a whole big stinking bird. That irritates me. I've never, ever seen, beautiful. I've never, ever seen one 100% cook perfect, a whole bird. I don't care how they cook it. On the grill, however they cook it. I've never seen everything they cook at the perfect temperature. There's concessions. There's concessions you gotta make. You wanna spread out everything. When you put them in the bags, you don't, you try not to, because you want even cooking and even dispersion of the heat. Remember, it's in a bath. So some things could be shielded from the hot water and not get total exposure. Here, if you get it all flat, everything, 100% exposure. That is the ticket to the world of CV. All right, we got our last one. Got a lot of good stuff right here. Let's see if we can clean this up. All right, let's get a little more oil. And this is all 100% Italian for extra virgin olive oil. It, it, and I've had Spanish extra virgin olive oil. I'm not just saying it by Italian. But if it's extra virgin, cold pressed, it's it's been prepped right, it's been made right. And you'll you'll really get a nice, nice taste. Your salads come alive. Oh my goodness. Okay. I love doing this. I've been thinking about it all day. I'm gonna come home from work. I'm gonna, I don't wanna do the video, but I'm starved and I'm definitely. All right. Here we go. All right, she's prepped and ready to go. If some of you guys are sous vide cooks, which I know you are, drop a jingle, drop a line, 
Let me know of some of your creations. We'd love to do that. We'd love to see it and learn other, we'd like to learn some other recipes. I think the sky's the limit. Right. These boys are, are ready to go. And we're gonna go ahead and get them started in here, but I'm gonna vacuum seal these right now. So stand by and I'll be right back. All right, guys, just like I told you, I captured the liquid, the oil was being brought up to here, I was able to seal it. And it's all, if you can look around it, it's all around this pushing in. All the steaks are like that. So all this oil really gets impregnated. I like that. So we are ready, got four beautiful steaks. What we're gonna do, this is this one is at 144 degrees. I'm gonna fold these over and I'm put these down in my sous vide dividers. Hopefully, I don't overflow any water. I should have checked that. Ooh, this would be close. That is hot water. Well, I took a little bit of water out of this. I was afraid I think I had it a little too full. I didn't realize that four steaks. These are big boys going in here. In this place, quite a bit. And the weight of them and that rack really hold them down in place. So put them down in there. Look at that. All you have to use later, it looks beautiful, four bodies. <laughs> All you have to use is a set of tongs, grips to pull it out. So it's really, it's really not that big a deal. Nothing to lose sleep over. All right, grab me a spoon here. Let's see what I could use. There we go. So short. All right, good deal. All right, now we're gonna mix everything together. Put the little bit of lemon juice. And just so you know, all of the the recipe, all the um, uh, measurements for this bourbon maple syrup. Oh yeah, it's gonna get a little bit more. This is not enough. I will put it in there, and of course, Jim Bourbon. All the alcohol cooks out. All of it cooks out, so you don't have to worry about that getting intoxicated. Well, you can smell that bourbon hole in the back. This is ridiculous. Let's get a little bit, some more maple syrup. Just wanna make sure everything gets glazed. This is going to taste so good. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in there, even though I didn't reach 100% temp yet. I want to start breaking these down. Oh, yeah. It's going to be very tasty. And these apples are sweet as it is. So when they break down, it'll be even that much nicer. It needs a little bit more. Tad bit more to bean. This is strictly for flavor. Strictly flavor. I am not a drinker by no means. Yeah. And we're gonna pour every bit of this is going in the in the uh, the bags, the sous vide bags. Okay. Bags ready. Let's see how they 
lay out so they can judge how much to put in each bag. What you want to do is keep it flat, one apple high, so you know, like, like one inch, like that. So let me spread them out and we'll get it even what's done. I'm eyeballing this, then I'm going to pour the rest out into uh, the juice before the all mix. I love apples and pork. Oh my goodness, it's probably my favorite fruit and meat combo. Good. They're flat. Let's get the rest of this out. Every bit of this goodness. There's some potent goodness here. This is definitely potent. right down to the last drop. Nothing goes to waste. So I'll go ahead and get this vacuumed up and you'll see what I mean. I'll flatten this, this out real good. Oh yeah. I think we can put it here. All right. I will catch right back up with everybody. Let's get this vacuumed up. Well guys, I just got cleaned up a little bit, got everything set up. Now the waiting comes. The temperature that I set this at for the uh, steaks, 144 degrees, one hour. They're gonna be cooked that good. I mean, off the charts. It's gonna be tender right to the very end. And then these guys that are in that extremely hot bath, that's set for 185, for an hour and a half. Hour and a half to two hours. If it's not soft enough, I can feel the bag, I'm gonna let it cook. So I'm gonna get back with you as soon as that cooks. It's gonna take a little while. But guys, thank you. In the meantime, let me just say again, I wanna always emphasize how much I appreciate all you guys and girls, your great comments and the faithfulness. Just, just hang in, sticking with us. I appreciate it, that, that drives me. That drives me to do some crazy stuff. So we've got outdoor stuff, archery that we've opened up that we're um, talking about uh, traditional bow hunting. We've got hunting, we've got some tents reviews, we've got some outdoor gear reviews we've got. And I got a unique one too that we're gonna do on coffee. One of my favorite, favorite pastimes is making the magic perfect pot of coffee, the perfect cup. I've got a video coming on that, I think you'll like it. Uh, I think it'll be very helpful. Anybody who's maybe just a mediocre drinker, I want to want you to step up. And you can turn mediocre coffee into something fantastic. But anyway, I will get back with you as soon as this is cooked. Thank you. Well, guys, welcome back for the final scene. We have waited two hours. They said really one and a half to two hours. I have two minutes and 50 seconds left, so my curiosity is going to get the best of me. We're going to take one of them out, and I think that'll be nice and so I know the apples will really be broke down. And there are, just to tell you, I picked Gala. There are sweeter apples, but that's all I have here. I love Gala, but I think Honeycrisp or some other ones have more of a sweeter taste. Okay. I shut this off a little while ago. It stayed in the water. I'll take a steak out. It's 
not really a big deal. I've been doing this for so long. It's like second nature right now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna drain it in the sink real quick. Uh, I'm trying not to keep the mess at bay. Let me just drain this. Excellent. And I'll get the steak out. If you guys never had a pork steak, a shoulder steak, you don't know what you're missing. There we go. Let me cut a piece of it on the side I want to show you. You have an option now. You can eat it the way it is and it's fantastic. I'm not going to do it for this video, but normally I'll take it and I'll sear it on a hot pan and sizzle it just to give a cap on it. But it doesn't affect the inside whatsoever. It just seals it. I'm going to cut this to show you. Oh, that is beautiful meat. Beautiful. Let me get another piece here. That's cooked perfect. Mildly pink, nothing crazy, because it's pork. I want to be, I want to be uh, good about that. So now this is what I'm really inquisitive because I haven't done this before. This is extremely you're extremely hot, 185 degrees. This is what she looks like. So I'm going to empty this out in the bowl. Let me see if I can do this right here. Yep, without making a mess. Try something. Let me see if I can open it up. There we go. Let's just, ooh, that's hot. Look at that. What kind of mess is that? Nothing. That's the way to do it. This is just too easy. Makes my job look too easy here, doing this. Okay. Oh man, sweet as honey. Oh yeah, everything's broken. Good deal. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to take a piece. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to bring it as close as I can get it to you. Do it in here. Oh, yeah. Let's get an apple and some cranberries. These are really uh, lightly sweetened dry cranberries. Mm. There is some, you know what else you could do? I almost did that, but I didn't want it to compete with the, uh, with the cranberries. You could put dried cherries. If you can get it organic, unsweetened, that is tremendous. You don't taste no bourbon, but the flavor of bourbon's in here. This is beautiful. What a nice, it's a chutney. It's not a gravy or nothing. Oh man, the maple syrup. I gotta try another piece. I'm sorry guys. I invited you over if somebody wants a bite. All you gotta do is say something. I want to, oh yeah, baby, here we go. Hmm. I'm chewing it slow because I don't want to wolf it down. I could eat this whole thing right now. It tastes so rich. I'm enjoying every, you know that word succulent? My kids hate it when I say that. 
But this is succulent pork. Juicy, delicious, little bit of, you know, like he says on diners, drivers, and dives, it's unctuous. That unctuousness of the fat, there's, such, there's a flavor here that's dead. Nothing else has a flavor like this. I'm telling you, what a nice, sweet contrast. Absolutely over the top. And I want to. I'm gonna cut a piece. I want to show you how well how well this got cooked. Let me do it here. Look how beautiful. Look how beautiful this is. Juicy. Oh, I'm telling you this. Oh yeah, look at that. I love it. Love it. This is absolutely beautiful. See all that juice? Yeah. This, it doesn't, honestly, it does not, yes, it is pork. And I, I know that. But it tastes so much like a steak, more than a pork. The pork shoulder steak is a fabulous cut. And you want it nice and thick. And if you do, if you cook it this way, you'll never be disappointed. Guys, now my family's coming over and I'm getting ready for them. I'm gonna empty out the rest of this, but how nice. And you know what's nice too, that being as a, chut as a chutney, it, it, it retained the form of the apples. They didn't fall apart, it's not applesauce. And, I, and I've had applesauce and I've had it made where it was almost like the consistency of a quasi applesauce. And it was still great with the, with the pork. Pork and pork and apples, cranberries, those type of really sweet fruits go fantastic. I imagine dates would go good too. Beautiful. And putting the maple syrup, that was really a good touch. And it was a bourbon maple syrup. So I will put the recipe in the links below. I'll list it all down. Listen, nothing, nothing is written in concrete. Go off the charts. That's how tremendous inventions, I mean, you think of creations happen. You'll create a dish that uh, man, make, your, make your head spin. Experiment. And this was worth it two hours, that thing at 185 degrees, give me a break. That's my first sous vide I bought four years ago. This one I bought uh, last uh, Thanksgiving. And I just got it in the mail and I'll be doing a video. I got the Jewel turbo it's supposed to cook in half the time it has a different uh, formula for cooking where it'll cook at a higher temperature for a shorter period of time it's all been pre figured out so i'm looking forward to doing those but to do a meal like this come on you don't have to you don't have to go to cooking school culinary school to do this i hope you guys enjoyed this look i'm loving it I love it. I eat what I make for you. This isn't just a production that I do and then I trash it. Absolutely not. I'm bringing this to work tomorrow. The guys are going to love this at the office and the girls, uh, they're going to like this. I'm going to cut this up and serve it. They're really going to like this. So again, it's come to another great session of cooking has come to an end. I really appreciate you guys hanging out and ladies hanging out. I hope you guys come back for the next one. There'll be more to come. We're, we're covering on this channel a bunch of different uh, avenues. We're, we're, we've opened up the hunting with the guns. We're doing traditional bow, bow hunting with recurves and traditional bows. We've got fishing. We've got cooking. Not only fish, but everything. So now we're going to be introducing as we get game. I got turkeys this year. As we get game, we're gonna cook it. I blew everybody out of the water last Thanksgiving. We had everybody over my daughter's house. There's probably 45 of us there. I had two whole turkeys. I sous vide every bit of the turkey. In two, two, that's why I bought this one because I needed I, I didn't realize it. The last minute I got stuck. I said, oh shoot. 
The dark meat cooks so much higher, 158 degrees. What am I gonna do? I don't have time. I forgot, I caught myself. They had one more, I bought it at uh, Sur La Table. And I cooked the dark meat separately. I cooked the white meat separately. When we took it off, I wish I would have videoed this, but I'm gonna do it for you guys. I used salad tongs. Just held a leg and salad tongs. You know on the turkey leg how the sinew is so tough and to pull meat off of it. Everything came off the bare bone. Everything came off the sinews. The meat just came, pulled, just pulled, it was, pulled, it was like pulled pork, but it was pulled turkey. And I did it with that the entire thing. It tasted, nothing was overcooked. Everything was cooked spot on, thanks to my friends here. And it was, it was really, it was, it was good. I cooked it 20, 20 to 22 hours. The recipe says anywhere up to 24 hours. And I did it there, and because it's the, the meat is tough, we tenderized it wild game or regular turkeys. The meat is tough. But guys, we got other videos to make, more exciting things to do on this channel, and I look forward to your comments, to your interaction, suggestions, whatever you whatever you have. But I will have all of this now. This is an easy one to do, and give me. I want to hear what you guys do. But again, thank you. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you on the next one.